After a massive week on the ATP and WTA with the Dubai Championships happening on the WTA, a 1,000 event on the WTA, a lot of points were up for grabs and a lot of changes happened, not just to the main rankings, but we did have a lot of changes to the finals race, especially on the WTA. But let's go talk about the past winners and the players that had won over the last couple of days. So in the ATP, we had three tournaments, starting with the Rio Open, Cam Norrie beating Carlos Alcrest, getting his revenge over last week's loss, 5-7-6-4-7-5, lifting the biggest trophy he's lifted since Indian Wells back in 2021. Hercatch, he won in Marseille 6-3-7-6, defeating Bonzi in that final. And in Doha, it was Daniel Medvedev taking out Andy Murray 6-4-6-4 to lift his second trophy in two weeks. On the WTA, we had two tournaments with the Dubai Championships, a 1,000 event, and 6-4-6-2, Krajikova taking out Sviantec in a big upset in that final, and she got a huge boost in the rankings. And over at the Merida Open in Mexico, we had Georgie taking out Peterson in the final, 7-6-1-6-6-2, to lift another WTA trophy. All right, let's go have a look at the players that have gone up and down in the rankings outside of the top 10. And Morales, he goes up 21 spots to a career-high number 42 after another very successful week on the clay in Rio. And Andy Murray, he goes up 18 spots at number 52 after making the final in Doha. So he's climbing back into that top 50. And on the WTA, it was Krajikova going up 14 spots to number 16 after winning in Dubai. So some big changes to the rankings due to some big results from some key players. Some of the players that have gone down in the rankings over the last week, Mackenzie McDonald, he's gone down 13 spots, number 62 in the world, after dropping points from this time last year. Ostapenko, also dropping a lot of points after not doing so well in Dubai this year, going down six spots to number 26 in the world. And Sloane Stevens dropping down 10 spots to 51 in the world after failing to defend points from this time last year as well. So some big drops in the ranking after a lot of points disappeared from some players' rankings. All right, let's start with the WTA rankings this week. And we had no change to the WTA top 10. Sviantec stays at number one, with Sabalenka at number two, Pagula at number three, Jabir stays at four. Just behind her is Garcia at number five, who's actually playing this week. There might be a change there eventually. Goff comes in at number six, Zachary at seven, with Kazakina just behind her at eight. Benchich very close behind at number nine, and Rabakina rounds out the top 10 for this week. Over to the WTA finals race now, and things are starting to look very interesting, with Sabalenka staying on top of the race, and Rabakina coming in second, but Iga Sviantec getting into that top three now, four spots higher than last week after her final in Dubai, pushing Benchich down to number four and Pagula down to number five. And Krajikova, 18 spots higher than last week, up to the top six after winning in Dubai, pushing Azarenka down to number seven. Goff comes up two spots to number eight after having a good run to the semis in Dubai. Lynette drops down three spots to number nine and Pushkova gets back into the top 10, four spots higher than last week with Garcia and Kudamatova losing their top 10 spots altogether in the race to the final. So the two players that made a good run in Dubai getting massive boosts in the rankings and it's starting to take some shape now and we're seeing a lot of familiar names in that top eight. Over to the men's rankings now and a little bit of a change here, but starting at the top, Novak Djokovic stays at world number one with Alcaraz only 200 points behind at number two. Sinti Pats comes in at three. Rude comes in at four. Taylor Fritz getting into the top five for the first time and it's been a long time since an American has been in the top five of the ATP. Two spots higher than last week, pushing Rublev down to number six. Medvedev goes up one spot to number seven, and Rafa's down two spots to number eight because he's losing all the points from Acapulco from last year. So Rafa is very, very much in danger of falling out of the top 10 completely for the first time since 2005. Felix Ogiel-Yassim at number nine, and Holger Runa rounds out the top 10 for this week. But like I said, Rafa, we don't know when he's coming back, but his ranking in the top 10 is in big jeopardy. Over to the race to the finals now, and things are starting to take shape. Like on the women's side, Djokovic stays at one with City Pass at two. But Cam Norrie, after winning his biggest clay court trophy, he goes up five spots to number three in the race to the finals. And Medvedev also going up three spots to number four after winning in Doha. So some players there getting some big boosts to their race to the finals points. Pushing Hashinov down to number five, Paul to number six, Sinner goes down to number seven, and Fritz goes down to number eight because of those two guys. Hercatch also gets back into that top 10, 13 spots higher than last week because he won in Marseille. And Alcaraz goes up 25 spots to round out the top 10 for the race to the finals after making it to the final of Rio. So there you have it. That is the rankings for another week. Some big changes due to that WTA 1000 event in Dubai. But we also have massive tournaments this week on the ATP. Acapulco, Dubai, both worth 500 points each. And that's a lot of points for the next week. But let me know down in the comments below, what's the biggest shock for you in the rankings? Is it the fact that maybe Rafa is on the brink 
of losing that top 10 ranking. I mean, that is very, very scary, considering that he hasn't been out of the top 10 since he was a teenager, 18, 19 years ago. It's been a long, long time since he's dropped out, but he might drop out if he doesn't play Indian Wells. Let me know down in the comments below. What do you reckon about the rankings this week?